Hi, AT from CNC at Home. If you've seen some of the other videos, you know that we spent some time over at Making It Happen, which is another YouTube channel. Spent some time with Leon and Natasha, and we talked about their laser. We did some stuff with the laser. We also looked at some other equipment they had. Um, on this video, what I'm going to do is talk about how a CO2 laser works and we're going to look at those components in the big laser that they have over at making it happen. So let's uh, take a look at some of that right now. Light amplification by stimulated emissions of radiation. That's what laser stands for. It's an acronym. Anyway, let's take a look at a basic CO2 resonator tube. The rectangle up on top is essentially a glass tube that is filled with CO2 and there'll be some nitrogen in there as well. At either end of the resonator, there are mirrors. The one side has a 100% reflective mirror and the other side has a partially or mainly reflective mirror. It does let some uh, of the light radiation come through it. So let's take a look at how this works. The first thing that happens is we apply a high voltage electrical charge and that excites the CO2, it kind of tickles the CO2 and it causes it to release a photon. And that photon starts to move and as it passes another CO2 molecule, it encourages that CO2 molecule to release a photon. The new photon that's released comes out in the same frequency and phase as the other photon. That creates coherent light versus the light we get from the sun or normal lights. Coherent light is of the same frequency and uh, phase. So what happens next is this light continues on its way and eventually will hit that reflective mirror. When it hits the reflective mirror, it bounces the other way until it hits the other mirror and bounces back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Eventually, it builds up enough power as more photons are released, and it will make its way through the partially transparent mirror. Now that the laser beam has escaped, we need to redirect it into our cutting area. So we have a mirror. It reflects down to the gantry where there's another mirror, and then that reflects towards the laser tube itself. To get a better perspective of what's going on, let's look at the front of this. The laser beam comes in, hits yet another mirror and then reflects down through the lens that focuses the laser beam onto our cutting material. Let's go through that one more time real quickly. We have a tube filled with CO2. We put a high voltage electrical charge which excites the CO2 molecules to release a photon. That photon then passes other CO2 molecules encouraging it to release a photon. This coherent light of same frequency and phase bounces around. More energy is created as more photons are released. We hit a series of mirrors, eventually through a lens, and we cut our material. Okay. But, uh, it's a Recky W6 laser. It's got a, what, 150 watt output, but it's a greed up, or peak power is 148. The greed upon power is what it'll actually put out, and that's about 130. Okay. Uh, if it's ever dies, the replacement cost is about a grand, plus shipping, okay. so... And you bought a second one when you got the laser? No. You didn't? No. I thought... Okay. We only got the one. You did just get the one. And okay. the reason why you don't buy a second one is it should hopefully last you two or three years, and there's a shelf life. If you have it sitting okay. on a shelf, it'll actually go bad slowly. Okay. So three years, when it's three years old, it won't have full power. Okay, so that's for cooling then. The water line. This yep. is the, the water line for cooling here. Yep, and here's the other one on this end. Okay. This little bulb is when they put the, the gas in it and they melt it and twisted it off. Okay. And then this is the electricity going in and there should be another wire at that end. So okay. this will be the hot end and that should be ground in. Okay. The little black wire. <clears throat> yep. Right. So there's no there's no recharging this no. with CO2 after Typically, some amount of time. When they die, they will shatter inside. Oh, okay. They just they have enough power and voltage that kind of violently go off. Okay. Move this table if I move my 
Okay, here's the business end of the laser, and we see that first mirror that's going to reflect that beam out towards open. the gantry. The CO2 is behind that wall, CO2 resonator tube. Yep. Comes through this hole in the wall. Hits, hits that this mirror. mirror, which is a 45 degree angle to the, the laser tube. And then that comes over hits to this that mirror, or, and then that, that's also 45, and then that bounces it down through the lens that's about here and okay. then it starts focusing it at this point it's actually a ball that's about that big of light okay i mean we can stick a piece of tape on there and hit flash and you can see what the burn mark looks like ready ready wow okay so just to get an idea that's about 10 millimeters not quite just under maybe eight and if we turn the power up it'd be bigger Right, so okay. That's kind of what we're focusing and that gets bounced down if it hits the lens. We should have lenses to show them somewhere. And just so we can see here, this is the air assist tube. Right, and that comes down and then it joins into the nozzle here. So these are the lenses that we'll try not to touch, don't touch it. that we use. Okay. They're about, I don't know, $13 a piece. We're still running our first lens. Mm -hmm. So we'll fold it back up. There's one uh, curved side and one flat side. Okay. The light goes into the flat side and comes up the curved side, which is important you don't mix it up. I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> this comes off. Okay. All right, so uh, to start with, what is the brand of this? Or does it even have a brand? Is it... With Chinese generic, generic laser Chinese. engravers are kind of universal. There's like there's the red and black Chinese laser engravers. These are not quite as well known. There's a couple different companies that make this laser. Mm -hmm. When you order them through Alibaba, they're acting like they're making it for scratch for you. What they're actually doing is taking the kind of laser that's easy to get there and then tailoring it. So like if we want the rotary chuck, they make sure it has to plug in for it and then the stripe the stepper drive relay that when you plug that in. Like right now, I can move the axis very easily. Mm -hmm. I unplug this. You know, the rotary, now I can't move this. Oh, wow, okay. Now it is, this moves it. And if you see how it moves it real nice and slow, mm -hmm. that's because it still thinks that it's in uh, rotary, mode. rotary mode. So okay. I have to tell it to menu, user settings, and then go to rotary home, hit enter, and then tell it to turn off. Actually, select it this time, tell it to turn it off, and then I have to tell it to write it to the controller. Now the Rorita has it shut off. Because so this can be ran alone. If I took any of the projects that we normally run on this flash drive, mm -hmm. I can plug them in here in the UDISC port and run it without the computer attached. What is it called? UDISC. UDISC. UDISC! <laughs> UDISC! Okay. So when you put yourself down, you, you disc yourself. You disc. <laughs> you disc yourself. So, with the rotary unplugged, the axis locks up and the rotary plugs up, plugs in. This is in free spool, so you can center it on whatever you're burning. Right. And, uh, and that's how they have it configured, okay. which seems to work good. So we got the front panel off. Yep. And so underneath here, this is the tray where all the the, the all the tasty pits drop drop into. Okay. For oh, I see. Okay. Okay. So. It, that all comes down, okay. If your side to side is ever off, you get two separate motors, right. you can simply shut it off and then force these, twist them by hand or pull in the belts to raise and level them. Right. Uh, with CO2 style lasers, it's important to have the mirrors aligned just so, so oh you yeah. get the laser pointed where you want it to and not burning a hole in the wall. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can show them in here. There's some spots where we've missed. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if that'll. At the white. Oh, there. <laughs> okay. Okay, so that's where the laser was, and the mirrors weren't quite aligned correctly. You get it aligned right here, up close. You drive the mo the mirror over, and you realize, nope, we're over, <laughs> because having it off a sixteenth of an inch there. 
it's just magnified. When it's only four inches, now when you drive it all the way back here. All right. Okay. So we got some two inch focal length, which are normal, and we got mm -hmm. some three inch. And three inch ones, we need a longer. Uh, we need a longer. So this this tube essentially longer. needs to yep. be longer. Okay. And then uh, these are the mirrors. I don't have any of them open. Okay. But yeah, you don't need to. They're just silver sided dirty. mirrors. Okay. We got fancy wipes, we got some dirty wipes. Uh, glasses cleaner solution works phenomenal because it doesn't take any of the coatings off. Okay. So if you're doing mirrors, glassing, glass solution is what you want. This is... Uh, the I, would, I would imagine the frequency of cleaning really depends on what you're burning and exactly. whether you're, or not you remember to turn the exhaust fan on. The air assist more so than the exhaust. If you're not pushing clean air in there and checking to make sure your air assist doesn't have moisture or oil in it, mm -hmm. you'll have problems. Okay. This is the Hall Effect sensor that the Axis use. This one was designed to be installed right here so that when the door is open it won't run. That's why okay. you throw it right back in there and keep it as a spare. <laughs> nice covers all the way around. These covers lift off. Mm -hmm. This front part swings open to adjust the mirrors better. Okay. I mean, we keep it as such a useful thing to lean stuff against. Right. The same type of handle. I mean, the construction overall, I mean, it seems like a well-built machine. About 1,300 pounds. Yeah, you were saying that it was heavy. <laughs> <laughs> well, imagine me and Natasha taking this off, having this big flappy door, trying to pick right. this up and carry it through the door and in here, setting it down out of the way, taking the bottom part, which is with the mirrors, we let the mirrors on it, so some parts stick out, the carriage is still on it. Flipping it on its back, sticking mm -hmm. it on a pallet jack, sliding it through the doorway. Trying not to hit the mirrors on the door. Yeah. <laughs> and you said that you had like a quarter inch clearance? Maybe? Where the mirrors were, yes. Okay. And that's with the, the wheels off. Like the next thing we would have to take the wheels off and move the gantry off. But we didn't want to take the gantry off because then everything that used to be square no longer is. Right. Okay. I guess I just. There's just not a good way to get perspective of how massive this thing is. The cover for just the laser bed is about as tall as I am. Right. So Natasha, you crawl in there this time and we'll get a picture of your feet. I would, stick but in. I don't trust him. He's got the door. <laughs> <laughs> Let me out! Let me out! Yeah, I have to stand all the way back here. Not that this has the, the greatest wide angle lens, but I have to stand back here to really get the, the whole thing in there. Wow. I'll bet he waited, or no. No, Vanna. Vanna White. Not Vanna. Vanna White. I'm not quite that sparkly old. dress. <laughs> I hope you're able to get some useful information out of this video. I certainly had a good time uh, talking with Leon and Natasha. We got uh, got a little silly here and there. Not too much of that made it onto camera. Um, I'm going to be able to get a couple more videos uh, out of this uh, particular trip. Uh, the next video, uh, hopefully I'll be talking about the differences between a rotary roller and a rotary chuck. Um, the rotary chuck is what they use over at Making It Happen, and the rotary roller is what we have here at CNC at home. If you like this video, or enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up or a like uh, here on YouTube. And if you like the content that we produce, uh, think about subscribing. Uh, that really helps the channel out. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this and have fun doing your CNC at home projects. Okay, what kind of what kind of knife is your daily carry? Uh, Kershaw. Nice. <laughs>